Here it is, God's middle knowledge. In this moment, God knows, here we go, what every possible creature would do, not just could do. So would, not just could. So it's not just a hypothetical that because God makes um, creatures with two legs and two arms that can run and run fast, that a certain person in a situation could run away. But he knows that they would, in a certain situation, run away. Okay? So there's more to it. It's not just what is possible in light of what he's chosen to create, but what would happen in any set of possible circumstances. For example, he knows whether Peter, if he replaced in certain circumstances, would deny Christ three times. By his natural knowledge, God knew in the first moment all the possible things that Peter could do if placed in such circumstances. But now in this second moment, he knows what Peter would in fact freely choose to do under such circumstances. Freely. Now, I hope you're thinking with me at this point and you're going, well, God hasn't decreed Peter's existence. And there are all sorts of things that define who Peter is, right? Um, Peter was impetuous. Peter's the guy that decides to pop off on the Mount of Transfiguration. <laughs> and Luke's kind enough to say Peter didn't really know what he was talking about. But um, um, it's like Peter's being treated as if there is a Peter pod. <laughs> and, and it's a disembodied something that just sort of floats around out there and can be known all about. And then it's manifested in Peter. But Peter would be different if he was born in the 21st century than in the first. And if he spoke English rather than Aramaic. And uh, there's just so many things that would change. Be, and, and the things that would change are based upon what we believe is God's sovereign ordaining of who we are. God determines how tall we are and God determines our genetics and our level of intelligence and just our health. And there's just so many things that are a part of the decree. But remember, middle knowledge is before all this. And somehow God could know what Peter would do in any given situation. And it's like Peter just has this existential existence and God hasn't chosen to create Peter yet. And God doesn't get to define Peter. That's the issue. Because the whole point of all this is to defend libertarian freedom for creatures. It's, it's not to defend God's libertarian freedom. It's not to defend God's kingly freedom. Middle knowledge is solely focused on free creatures. Nothing else. That's all it's about. And so it is not meant to give us any insight into God's nature or God's freedom. In fact, it limits God's freedom, as we will see. It's all about man. It's all about man. Very, very important to see that. Middle knowledge, like natural knowledge, thus is logically prior to the decision of the divine will to create a world. Mark that one down. Okay. Here's why this is important. In this scheme, when God envisions what worlds he can create, the range of possibility is determined by middle knowledge. 
there are worlds God cannot create because knowing what free creatures will do, he may want to do something in a certain world, but there's no free creature he could put in that situation that would do what he wants to do, so he can't do it. He can't do it. That's why Molinists will tell you God simply could not create a world in which there was no sin. All free creatures, whatever. And immediately in the back of your head, hopefully there's a voice going, who determined that? Out of what will did it come to define that all creatures are going to behave in this way? How does that work out? Well, that's what this is all about. That's why we're talking about it. In the second moment of knowledge, God knows which of the possible worlds known to him in the first moment are within his power to create. For if it is true that Peter would sin if placed in certain circumstances, it follows that even though a world with identical circumstances in which Peter does not sin is possible, nevertheless, it is not within God's power to create that world. Do we see this? Are we hearing this? It is not within God's power to create that world because middle knowledge tells him that Peter would do this thing. How has Peter been defined in such a way as to have this certainty of knowledge so much so that it limits God's ability to create a world that he may desire to? God's freedom is limited by middle knowledge. Where does that come from? Where does that come from? For if he were to create such circumstances and place Peter in them, then Peter would sin. This does not mean that God could not prevent Peter sinning, for he could, but then the circumstances would no longer be identical because God would be interfering. This is all based upon a concept of autonomy. Hence, there are any number of possible worlds known to God in the first moment of knowledge which he cannot create because, why? Because free creatures would not cooperate. Free creatures would not cooperate. This is what I've been trying to say. His middle knowledge serves, so to speak, to delimit the range of possible worlds to those he could create given the free choices which creatures would make in them. There is Molinism. There is, so God is limited to what he can create by the free choices which creatures would make in them. He doesn't determine those things. Who did? God has not decreed, made the decision. Remember, we had natural, free. Here is the decree to create, and middle knowledge comes before that. So God has not defined any of these free creatures. If you have middle knowledge of exactly what those free creatures would do, then God is not free to create those creatures in such a way as to glorify him in the way he desires to be glorified. Now, let's take Peter out because we don't know a lot about Peter personally, but, you know, I, I remember being a teenager and there was, a, uh, there was that period of time when there was a great deal of discussion uh, by my elders above me as to what I should be looking at and doing in life. And one of the things they said, well, look at the gifts that God has given to you. What gifts has God given to you? Well, doesn't the gifts that God has given to me, aren't they relevant to how I will react in any given circumstance? But isn't that a part of God's free choice to make men differ? Sounds to me like middle knowledge makes men differ and God doesn't have freedom in that matter. So who determined this? Who determined these things? 
God's mental knowledge is like his natural knowledge in that it is logically prior who, to his decision to create a world. Indeed, God's decision to create a world is based on his middle knowledge. Based on his middle knowledge. This is how important middle knowledge is. Think about this. For the majority of the history of the Christian church, the very basis of God's decision to create a world, which, by the way, I just want to point out is really not biblical language, but we had, had no idea. Somehow, uh, no one figured this out. May I suggest why? Because no one reading the Bible would ever come up with this. Ever come up with this. That's why I said last time. Talk about Saul. Talk about uh, uh, Matthew 11 all you want. None of that is middle knowledge because it's all part of the created order. It always, it's all come after the decree to create. So God knows Saul. He knows what he would do. But that's not some theoretical Saul before the creation. He knows what Saul will do because he made Saul. He created Saul. He knows what the men of Crazy and Bethsaida would do because he created them. His will is behind all that. You can't get middle knowledge out of that. Don't abuse scripture that way. That's post-decree. So God's decision to create a world is based on his middle knowledge and consists of his selecting to become actual one of the possible worlds known to him in the second moment. Middle knowledge is like his free knowledge in that its content is not essential to God. So remember, free knowledge is over on the side, and that's dependent upon his creation. Since creatures could choose differently, God's knowledge would be different if they were to do so. Since creatures could choose differently, God's knowledge would be different if they were to do so. It's not as clear as I'd like it to be, but if this is about middle knowledge then what action logically is prior to and determinative of God's action of creation? The decisions of free creatures. Because if this knowledge is this knowledge, and that's the basis upon which he can actualize worlds, then the actions of free creatures is what determines which world God could actually create. That's what's being said here. That's what's being said here. 